guys, it's Ashley, and today's video is a couple days late, but I'm going to be doing my May 2016 wrap-up. I'm pretty happy with my May wrap-up. I ended up reading eight books. Six of them were ones that were actually on my TBR for May, so pretty happy with that. Let's get started. The first book I read in May was The Girl Who Fell From the Sky by Heidi Duro, and I read this in audiobook form. So it tells the story of this little girl who moves in with her grandma and her aunt after her mom and her siblings and her are in an accident, leaving her an only child and the only member left of her family. Everybody else dies in the accident, but somehow she mysteriously survives with only some damage to her right ear. I think she's actually fully deaf in that ear after the accident and it's told from three different points of view. I got over halfway through but unfortunately I couldn't finish it. I ended up giving it a star and a half out of five which is one of my lowest ratings of the year so far. I really wanted to like this book. I really like the diverse characters in it and uh, the main character especially she had a hearing disability and she also was half black and she was dealing with some race issues and some cultural identity issues and especially because her, her grandma was black and she was living with her grandma and I think the author really did try to explore those issues but just kind of fell short and basically what I ended up feeling was that even though I really liked the main character and liked her point of view and was interested in her she's just like this really little girl who's incredibly smart and I was really interested in her the story itself did not captivate me it didn't keep me wanting to read it and it just was really boring the writing style was not very colorful it was just kind of bland and, and just very surface and so it's kind of like this mystery story a little bit of magical realism and a little bit of like cultural identity crisis so it's a lot of things put into one and again it has a lot of potential but just honestly wasn't that interesting and I, I think that it was a failed attempt at something bigger. I'm not sure what the author was trying to do but it didn't really work unfortunately. The next book that I read was The Hidden Oracle which is the first book of the Trials of Apollo series by Rick Riordan. I gave this book a full 5 out of 5 stars. I have a full review for it on my Goodreads which I will leave a link to in the description below. I absolutely adore this book. It was a breath of fresh air especially because I wasn't so fond of the Magnus Chase book that came out in fall of 2015, but I really liked Apollo. I like that he wasn't so sarcastic. Like, I feel like every single Rick Riordan character has this super amazing sharp wit and sense of sarcasm, and I think with Magnus Chase it was just blown out of proportion and unnecessary. And that sort of personality aspect was taken out of the equation for the Hidden Oracle, and Apollo is a very different kind of character. He is a very self-aware character. He has a lot of, you know, past. He already knows about Greek myths and Greek history and demigods and everything, so there's no introduction to the world. And he's really, like, old. So he's, like, one, he's full of himself because he's a god, and two, he has a lot to say because he's, like, so old. He just has an opinion on everything because he's seen so much. It was just amazing. I loved Apollo. I loved seeing some of the other characters from previous books come back. I had to actually put the book down before going further in the book because I knew that we were about to run into some old characters and I was like, nope. Stop, take a minute, breathe before you move ahead, otherwise you're gonna get overwhelmed, Ashley. I absolutely adore it. I have nothing bad to say about it, and again, a full five out of five stars. The next book I read in May was Beauty Queens by Libba Bray. I also have a full review of this book on my Goodreads, which I will also leave a link to in the description. And I ended up giving this book a three out of five stars. I really liked it at first, and then it was a little bit too long, and a little bit repetitive, and a little bit predictable. So as I got further in the story, I ended up not liking it as much and started to kind of give it a lower and lower rating in my head as I got through the story. So this book is about a bunch of beauty queens, some teenage pageant girls who get into a, a plane crash and are crashed on a deserted island and a lot of really sketchy stuff ends up happening and um, they are thrown into some situations that are completely taking them by surprise but the characters themselves 
are kind of a surprise. They have a lot of depth that you wouldn't expect out of beauty queens, and I think that was really great. A lot of them are a lot smarter and have a lot, like, different interests than you would expect, and it is an incredibly diverse cast of female characters. I'm talking deaf, bisexual, hypersexual, lesbian, feminist, Indian, black, I mean, transgender, like, all the different kind of diversity characters you would want are in this book. And it's really crazy that out of all the books to have it, it's a book about beauty queens, and I think that's really great that the author did that. Unfortunately, it just got really silly and really, like, meta in places to the point of absurdity, in my opinion, and it just made it less enjoyable, a little bit too self-aware, so that's kind of the repetitiveness of that ended up knocking it down. So that's where I ended with my rating. Next I read Wild by Cheryl Strayed and this was for my book club and I ended up giving this a 2 out of 5 stars. The biggest reason for this low rating is honestly Cheryl herself. I didn't like her as a character, as a narrator, as a woman, as a person, and it really kept me from enjoying her story. This book is a story of her walking the Pacific Crest Trail from the southern end of California all the way into Washington and her journey to do that and what led her to that decision and it's like a history of her life and also of all the people she meets while on the Pacific Crest Trail and how they influence her and shape her to becoming a better person and making better decisions which she really needed because she made some really bad decisions. Like. I was astounded by how horrible of a person she was. I think the biggest issue for me, which is something that is my fault, is going into this I thought this was going to be more of a travel book about what the Pacific Crest Trail is like and what it's like being in nature and how to backpack like that as a woman by yourself, but it ended up being more about Cheryl herself. Self-discovery and introspection and a history of her life and I just wasn't interested in her. That's why it ended up being kind of a letdown for me and again it was only two out of five stars for me. Next I read How I Live Now by Meg Rossoff. I got through this book really really fast and I ended up actually enjoying it more than I thought I would. I gave it a three out of five stars. It has a lot of different elements in it. The places it went was really surprising. It's about this girl named Daisy who is living in a slightly futuristic time in World War III. She's American, but she goes to live with her English family, her English cousins. Actually falls in love with one of her cousins. It's That's one of the things that was like really surprising and jarring. It's a little bit disturbing, but also you kind of like their relationship even though you're not supposed to. And there's a little bit of magical realism involved with her cousins, but I won't get into that because I don't want to spoil it. It's about her living through World War III and figuring out her relationship with her cousins and getting through that time with them and surviving the whole ordeal. And I really liked Daisy as a narrator, like she just, she really did just make the book for me. She's really introspective and you get to know her really in depth and she's very self-critical. The biggest thing about this is her relationship with her cousins and how it grows and how she sort of discovers what good family members are like and what bad family members are like. It just, the whole thing kind of put me off. Like I said, the, the thing that kept me from giving it a full rating was just how unsettling parts of it were. There's just a lot going on that I wasn't expect to have go on. Yeah, it's just awkward. So that's what gave it a 3 out of 5 stars for me. Next I read The Unexpected Everything by Morgan Matson, and I was anticipating this to be a long read because it's a fairly thick book, but I ended up reading it pretty fast as is the case with most of Morgan Matson's books. This book is about a girl named Andy who is a senator's daughter. Summer begins and she has a summer program lined up to do a basically like a doctor school but that falls short when one of the letters of reference gets pulled for the program and so she ends up having to scramble to fill her summer and ends up becoming a dog walker and in the middle of that she meets Clark who is wonderful and amazing and he is just so adorable. It's about her relationship with her dad the senator and her and her friends and her and Clark and how to stop being such a planner and maybe start living in the moment instead. I had some issues with it though and I ended up giving it a three and a half out of five stars which is surprising because usually I give Morgan Matson's books four stars or higher. I just couldn't connect with Andy or any of her friends. They just seemed kind of petty and unrelatable and Andy in particular. I mean I, she was a nice person. She was a very like good person with good goals. She was going places in life but I just feel like she was kind of haughty and I found that completely unappealing. It wasn't as cute as the other Morgan Matson books. I did really love Clark though. Clark was a really great male lead character. He is adorable. I, I tend to like Morgan Matson's male characters more than the female characters. He really 
kind of saved the book for me in a way. Otherwise, I probably would have given it a much lower rating. I just found the whole struggle with her and her father to be really forced, and her relationship with Clark felt unnecessarily angsty, and all the drama with her and her friends was like, really? This is your drama? You're all gonna be that dramatic about all that? It just wasn't as, like, heart-wrenching as I think it was meant to be. Yeah, three and a half out of five stars. The next book that I read in May was Me Before You with Jojo Moyes, and I also just saw this movie yesterday, and oh my god, I am still like reeling from reading the book and then like four days later watching the movie. It's just like major heart issues are happening. I am not able to recover. Ugh. Oh my god. So this book is about Lou, who is a girl who's pretty much ordinary. She lives in England, she has a very ordinary life, living with a family, she was working in a cafe, and she ends up getting a job being kind of a caretaker or companion to Will Trainer, who is this really rich, like, 31-year-old guy who ends up in an accident, in a motorcycle accident, and he becomes a quadriplegic about their relationship and her discovering herself and how he's dealing with being a quadriplegic. This book left me with a lot of emotions. I pretty much finished this book and was like, I don't think I'm going to be able to read again. <laughs> I was so overwhelmed with this book. I have not been this emotional in a book in over a year at least. It was amazing. I am astounded by the story, astounded by the characters. I loved Lou so much. She is one of my favorites now because she's just so relatable and so darn cute and happy. And I love her so much and I only want good things for her. I had like sad dreams when I finished this book. I was so sad. And then I went and saw the movie, which is a wonderful movie adaptation. There are literally like pages pulled from the book and put verbatim into this movie. It's like what every book lover dreams of when their books get turned into movies. Like, you all should go see it if you've read the book. It's so perfect. Casting, acting, writing, filming, all of it was perfect. Obviously, I ended up giving this book 5 out of 5 stars. And the last book that I read in May 2016 was Pearl by Deirdre Riordan Hall, and this book was given to me from the author in exchange for an honest review, and I did review it. I will leave a link to the review on Goodreads in the description below. I ended up giving this book 4 out of 5 stars. It was really, really good. The writing was very varied. That was the only problem I had with it is it would go from being like three word sentences very choppy very to the point and then it would go into very in-depth self-explorative soul-searching sort of long paragraphs that were like words that were trying to be poetic and they were successfully poetic a lot of the times it was just an interesting choice of when it was one way of writing and when it was the other but for the most part it was a really great book this book tells the story of Pearl who is the daughter of JJ Yeager and JJ was a famous band member you know a couple years ago like 20 years ago or something now she's a drug addict and she ends up landing herself in an institution and so while she's there Pearl's uncle sends her to like a boarding school a high-end boarding school Pearl has to kind of reconcile with the fact that like she's actually like a homeless nobody and she's put up with all these uptight people in this boarding school and she's trying to find her place and figure out if she actually belongs there and if she deserves happiness and if she can indulge herself or if she has to just stay upset all the time because of her past it's got good content it's a nice change of pace. I loved reading it, and I loved reading about these harsh realities, terrible parentage, and all of that kind of stuff. I like reading books like that because they're a little bit more realistic, and they're not as fluffy, and they kind of mean more, I think. And I just, I really love this story, and I cannot recommend this book enough. Like I said, besides that writing thing, I had no issues with it. I really love this book. I finished it really, really fast, and yeah, I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. And again, thank you for the author for providing me with a copy of that book, because it really was very, very good. And that's it. That was my May wrap-up. Let me know if you guys have read any of those books, and what you guys plan on reading in June. And if you like what you see, please subscribe to more videos and give it a big thumbs up and I will see you guys next time with a new video. Bye!